was your debt, the debt you owe that took him to the cross. He was not owing as a person. The debt you couldn't pay. He left his throne in heaven and came to the earth. Even his very own did not receive him. They treated him and disdained him as evil. Even them he created, he made. Yet, he endured it all. At the end, he was nailed to the cross. For three days, he was in the dark. But the third day, hallelujah. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, be Eternal Rock of Ages, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and honor. We thank you that today we are alive to celebrate this day. And Lord, as we are talking, there are many, they are running into the mortuary. As we are talking, there are people, they are feeding through the, the pipe. But your grace has made it possible for us to be healed and hearty celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory, all the adoration. We worship you. And the only order ask that you will open the heavens upon us this morning. You will cause your word to come to us with power and strength. You will reveal to us those depths that will help us to see beyond now. Thank you, precious Father, for I pray in Jesus' name. Let everyone say a big amen. amen. Congratulations, everyone. Happy Easter celebration. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll be reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 27. 27 from 46. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. From 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lava sabatani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou Forsaken me. What a question. Jesus was asking what? My father, my father, why 
have thou forsaken me. Amen. Are you there with me now? Some of them that stood there when they had that said, this man called for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to bottom. And the air did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now, when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women dear, beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Mandeline, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee children. When even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the, and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure unto the dead day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, You have a watch. He said, you have, ye have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Praise the Lord. Amen. The, the title of my message is When the Father is Silent. Somebody say, when the Father is silent. Oh, please talk to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Many have felt this way in one time or another. God becomes so silent that his presence seems to be nowhere around you. Your loving father watches you, watches you suffer and does nothing about it. Abandoned, forsaken, rejected, left alone, Jesus felt on the cross as our Father remained silent, watching him go through the pain, all alone on the cross, hanging there between two sinners, mocked by men, naked and in shame, the one who did wonders, saying that he is the Son of God, the one who said, I and my Father are one. Praise God. Jesus said, my father, my father, why have thou forsaken me? He was lonely. The question is, did the father actually forsake him? What was happening at that time? Many of us at times feel alone. You have prayed, you fasted. You are asking God, do something. And it appears as if he's so far. You can't sense him. You can't feel him. 
It appears as if your dream, your vision is gone. But I say different thing from this. What happened to Jesus was that one, the father is a God of principle. God can behold sin. God can behold iniquity. At that time, why Jesus hung on the cross, there was something around him. He was not on the cross because of the sins he committed. Remember, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. At that time, on the cross of Calvary, every sin you and I ever committed was on him. All the iniquities was on Jesus. And the consequences, everything was on him and the father couldn't behold it. Because he's a twice holy God. And at that time there was a separation. Now I want to ask you, how many of you have discovered that when you commit sin, if you are indeed a Christian and you sin inside you, if you are sensitive, you will feel a separation. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Now, this was on Jesus and the father can twin together with him at that time and the father separated. In his humanity, Jesus cried and said, my father, my father, why have thou forsaken me? It was lonely. It was dry. He can't sense him anymore. He can't feel him. He was right there all alone. Hey, you said to us, you and your father are one. Where is your father now? He's silent. You say you are the son of God. Hey, excuse me. Where is your God now? He's silent. You who heal the sick, who raise the dead, where is all your power? Where are the angels? You said, even now, you are well able to release 12 legions of angels. Now here you are. Where are the angels? I want you to consider what happened to people like Peter, John, James, Matthew, Bartholomew, those apostles, what happened? All the teachings they have had, they have seen miracles, they have seen signs and wonders. They were seeing all kinds of manifestation. Behold, their master they trusted. Each time they want to pick him, he vanishes. Each time they want to touch him, he's gone. Here he is, hanging on the cross. And they were waiting that something supernatural would take place. Yet nothing happened. What did you think was their mind at that time? Mary, the mother of Jesus, was watching. Mary Mandaline was watching. Mary, the mother of James and Jesse, they were watching. The apostles were watching. I want to ask you, were they watching in approval? They were watching in disappointment. They were watching an utter disappointment. What is going on? Why is this darkness covering us? Why can't he call his father again? What in the world is going on? Do something. What is going on? He was all alone. At that time, no angel could assist him. At that time, nobody could assist him. He was hanging on that cross alone. As if he was begging the issue. As if hell, demons, principalities, powers. As if they were in charge. They've taken over. Our giant has been caught. And his father that he introduced us to has not reacted. What in the world is going on? 
hanging there between two sinners, mocked by men, naked in shame. And no word, no reaction from the father. How should his, why should his father turn his back on him? When he was in dear need of him, how would the father keep back the legions of angels to stop this attack on his only begotten son? Why would he, at a time like this, the question rang in their mind, why? Oh, they were, why? He saw these things happening. No response. No response. No words of encouragement. No assurance of his presence with him. No light of hope anywhere. Has God really left his only begotten son in the hands of the wicked man? And the devil to attack his body, his soul and spirit? Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his disciples to watch with expectation. Something will, done, will be done, on, a miracle will happen. God is true to his word and cannot lie. He will come to his rescue. They looked, but their expectations was cut off. Their expectations was cut off. He will soon come. He will soon react. But the expectations was cut off. Oh my goodness. Book of John chapter, chapter 8 verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The father had not let me alone. For I do always those things that please him. My goodness. Now you are left alone. You said your father has not left you. But now you are all alone. You are right on the cross. To the eyes of the natural man abandoned. John 10, 32. John 10, 32. Jesus answered them. This is John 10, 30. 30. I and my father are one. Excuse me. If you and your father are one, why did you cry and say, why have you forsaken me? Is it that you never expected that to happen? So what's going on here? What in the world? <laughs> Job made a statement. I want you to turn with me to the book of Job chapter 23 verse 8 to 10. Job 23, 8 to 10. Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. I'm backward, but I cannot perceive him. Now listen to me. Look at me. Look at me. Please keep it there. How many of you know there are times it's like you're all alone. Many of you have been there. It's so lonely. Men don't have words to encourage you. As a matter of fact, they turn against you. Even when you, it appears you want to do something good, they turn it to evil. Everyone tends to be against you. You run to your closet. Let me perceive him. He's, 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 has he traveled? You lift up your holy hands. Oh, Lord, my God. Oh, in awesome wonder. 
Consider all the works thy hands has made. I see the stars. Oh, I hear the rolling thunder. Hey! It appears the more you sing, the more the heavens are locking against you. And no man seems to have enough good word to encourage you. Job said, behold, I go forward, but it's not there. I'm backward, but I cannot perceive him. Jesus was all alone on that cross. He could no longer perceive his father. And the mother and all that came looking at first, expecting something to happen. Oh, 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 verse 9. On the left hand, where he doth walk, but I cannot behold him. For he hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. It's his nature at times, he hides himself. Oh my goodness. Does it mean he's not seeing you? Does it mean he's not aware of what you are going through? I have cried in the day, in the night, in the morning, in the afternoon. I couldn't behold him. I couldn't see him. I'm left alone on this journey. What in the world is going on? Every good I have done have turned bad to me. People I gave to turn against me. People I bless, they are against me. All I have done is to look for their good, but they seek for my death. Oh, God. They are no longer there. Listen. They went home. The Bible says, The soldiers make mockery of him. They made a mockery of him. And Joseph Arimathea went to Pilate. He said, Pilate, give me the body. Because when he died, they couldn't understand because none of the apostles have a flicker of understanding of that scripture that he was going to die. But he died. Their hope gone. Ah. Oh boy, have we believed in vain? Have we followed for these three and a half years and it's gone? We can't understand this. And you know what? They took his body. When they took his body, they put the body in the new sepulcher and they closed it. That was the end of the matter. They saw when they closed it. They saw it. The mother, the three Marys, left home disappointed. It's over. It's over. It's over. They left home disappointed. The angel that came to Mary said to Mary, he shall sit on the throne of his father David. The one to sit on the throne of his father David is dead. What of all the promises, the songs of the angels that sang glory to God in the highest, on earth peace and goodwill to sons of men is gone. It's over. They were disappointed. They were disappointed. 
In Luke chapter 1, verse 32 and 33. Fast, please. He shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Did you see that? And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Hey, the man that is going to reign over the house of Jacob forever is there in the sepulchre, buried. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. And he's dead. And the soldiers, they said, soldiers, Secure the grave. Meaning, it's over with him. Secure the grave. Secure it. It's over. But I want you to know, silence on the earth, gloom, darkness, hopelessness, Why? For their light was cut off in the midst of his days. Their light was cut off in the midst of his days. Their thought and imagination, this one will deliver us from the hand of Caesar's rule. We deliver us from the hand of the Roman soldiers. That was all gone. Can I hear somebody say, God is almighty? Say it like you made it. What? They didn't know that there was an activity behind the scene. Oh, God. I didn't hear somebody talk to me. What they didn't know is that God is almighty. There was an activity behind the scene which natural eyes cannot see. There was an activity. And that is the main thing. You know, at times when you are lonely, when it appears God is far from you, I want you to know there is an activity behind the scene. There is what? An activity behind the scene. Oh, goodness. They didn't know. Because their eyes were not open to understand the scriptures yet. The Holy Spirit has not been given to them. But there was an activity behind the scene. Hallelujah. There was a dethronement going on. <laughs> because when Adam messed up, he gave the key. He gave his authority. He gave his power to the serpent. And now, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he came to pay. And after the payment and nail to the cross, he needed to collect the keys. He needed to dethrone the serpent that had relationship with Adam in the Garden of Eden. But natural eyes could not see that. There was a contest. There was a wrestling. And Jesus found himself over to the other side because he needed to defeat death. He needed to take the keys away from Satan. He needed to dethrone him so that you and I can be enthroned. There was an action behind the scene. There was a contest behind the scene. That was not all. He went to preach to the old saint that died. First Peter chapter 3.
Oh, hallelujah. 18 and 20 to 20. For Christ also had once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Yes. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Did you hear that? Oh my goodness. Those that died in the days of Noah, they were in prison. Did you hear me? They were in prison. He needed to preach to them. That time he was lying in the grave in the spirit. He was making declarations. He was dethroning. Oh, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Verse 20 now. Which sometimes were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Did you not see what he was doing? I said, did you now see what he was doing? He was right there. Preaching. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. When there was silence, he came before the Father. And natural eyes couldn't see it. He carried his own blood and brought it. Because heaven has to agree and accept that blood for the atonement, for the remissions of sin. He came to present it to the Father. He came in sight as a lamb that was slain. But there was the one sitting on the throne having the book tied with seven seals because the assignment which was done in the physical was just a little thing compared to what should be done in the realm of the spirit. And while he was in the realm of the spirit moving as a lion he came and John saw him and John cried and said, no hope for us on earth. But one of the 24 elders said to him, John, don't cry for the line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. John, don't bother yourself. He got up from where he was seated with the blood all over him and went to him that sat on the throne. That book has been in his hands since Adam committed treason. He went to the one that sat on the throne and took the book from him. He did not restrain him because the blood he shed has been accepted. Are you hearing what I'm saying? While he hanged on the cross, my sins were washed. On the cross, my sickness, my disease, all the consequences of my evil were nailed to the cross. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He nailed it to the cross. It was a finished work. Clean, clear. He went to the Father, took the book, untied it. And in that book was seven things. The seven keys that Jesus brought for you and I. He brought for us power. Riches, wisdom, strength, honor, and glory, and blessings. Listen. He brought it. Not for him, but for us. He brought it. Not for himself, but for the church. Church, I want to let you know. Behind the scene, he went and liberated Abraham. He went and liberated Moses. He went and preached to them. And my Bible says, 
the resurrected. When he resurrected, and the Bible says, the graves opened. There was earthquake. There was crossing from one realm to another realm. In the book of Colossians, Book of Colossians. Hallelujah. Something happened there that you needed to, to hear. Chapter 3. Chapter 2, 3, 13, 14, and 15. And you've been dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh had he quickened together with him. Having forgiven all your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. All the handwriting that was against us. The handwritings of poverty, of sickness, of evil, of lame, crippled, blind, deaf, dumb, dead. All the handwriting that was against us for judgment, blotting out all of them which was contrary to us. He took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Whatever situation you think of today has been nailed to the cross. That poverty has been nailed to the cross. That sickness has been nailed to the cross. That cancer has been nailed to the cross. That evil has been nailed to the cross. And that was why he came out and said, It is finished. I pay the price. Nothing more to be paid. Occupy it till I come. He paid it all. He paid it all. Nothing to be done. He did all. Glory to God. He did all. And having spoiled principalities. <laughs> I'm going to ask you. The person attacking you have been spoiled. You didn't hear what I said. That witch, that demon, that marine, that occult power, whatever that power is, my Bible says, my elder brother spoiled him. Oh God, you didn't hear what I said. He spoiled him. Do you know how to spoil something? When they spoil your vehicle, it can't move anymore. The man attacking you has been spoiled. He's no longer smart. He has no more power. He has nothing. Are you hearing me? He has no spoil. He's empty. He's useless. He's only a trick star. My people perish for lack of knowledge. As for whether the devil has power, he is powerless. For all power has been given to Jesus in heaven, on earth, and underneath the earth. Therefore, go. He asked the church to go with boldness. Go! Occupy till I come. The price is paid. He's resurrected. He's the only one whose tomb is empty. Every other one, their tomb, their bones are still in their tomb. That's the different thing between Christianity and any other religion. My goodness, my Jesus resurrected. His bones were not broken. He did not see corruption. He came out triumphantly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All the soldiers could not stop the sepulchre from being opened. Are you with me now? Hey, the sepulchre 
was sealed. But when the power of resurrection came, hey, the soldiers, they all collapsed as dead. Are you hearing me? The angel of earthquake that came sat upon the rock, meaning. Your deliverance is permanent. Amen. When the power of resurrection came, they shivered as dead. You know what I mean? You as a child of the living God, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Did you hear what I said? No demon should see you and remain calm. When they see you, they should shiver. Oh, yes. Because of what you carry. What you carry is the resurrection power. That is what you carry. Listen, the church is yet to understand what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. The church is yet to understand the depth of what happened. Listen to me. I owe nobody. I'm not owing anywhere. Jesus made a down payment for me. I am free. I'm set loose. I'm at liberty from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I am delivered. He said, brethren, the job is done. Can I hear somebody say the job is done? Say it like you made it. Jesus finished the work. <laughs> he has activated behind the scene. Thrones have been restored. Your glory, your honor is being washed on. His silence is but a moment. Wait on him. Don't give up on your loving father. God has not given up on you. There are times you feel lonely. At times you feel he's far from you. At times you feel I have gone round. I have fasted and prayed. I have looked for but I couldn't find him. No, there is something going on behind the scene. God has not left you. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. I am looking forward to that time where believers will understand the reality of what happened on the cross of God. I'm looking forward to that time where we will really understand the work that was done for us on the cross of Calvary. And that is why we do not really understand the mystery. Now, it was the third day all payment and spiritual transactions behind the scene were completed. On the third day, all transactions were completed. Amen? Listen, if they had known, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They did not know. They were ignorant of the game. God is a master strategist. Praise God. I say God is the master strategist. Amen. If they had known they would have left Jesus. They thought we've had it made. The devil will always make mistakes concerning you. Amen. For the wind bloweth to where it listed, and so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. If you are born of the Spirit, you are not arrestable. If you are born of the Spirit, when they wait for you here, you are passed through their way. You know why? Because you are, your life is blown by the wind of the Holy Spirit. You are not traceable. You are a child of the living God. You are born of the spirit of Christ. Hallelujah. They didn't know because they do not understand prophecy. The devil does not understand your destiny. He cannot tell 
what will happen. He may wait for you at your tender age. He's not aware that at the age of 50, that is when God will begin to move you in that realm he's afraid of. He may be waiting for you at the age of 50. He's not aware that the age of 30 is when God will begin to move you. Are you hearing me? He may sense that there is something about you, but he does not have complete understanding about your person. Are you with me? The devil is a liar. Amen. Look at the book of John. I end up with that. Chapter 20. 21 to 23. John 20, 21 to 23. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. I, I, I want to hear somebody shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. As his father sent him, no power on earth was able to rusticate him. Jesus said, that is how I sent you. As the father sent him, he never begged for money to have a crusade. That is how the father sent him. As the father sent him, he never lacked anything. He had an accountant. That is how the Father sent you. The Bible says, Jesus declared and said, as my Father sent me, so sent I you. Praise God. As I am to the Father, so that is how you are to the Father. As he has sent me, so have I sent you. Look at verse 21. And then Jesus said unto them again, peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so sent I you. 22 now. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Yes, 23 now. That is one scripture that is hard for many to interpret. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. That is where the Roman Catholic misinterpreted the scriptures because of understanding. Whosoever sin you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Do you understand that scripture? Whichever sins. Do you see the class that God, Jesus, brought you to? Did you see the realm he brought you and I into? Listen, look at me. Come. Go down a little bit. Stay there. Jesus is the head of the church. Is that true? Oh God, please. Is that true? Yes, sir. And this is the body of Jesus which is you. Stand where you are. The head is Jesus. The church is his body. John 16, 19. No, no, no. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Oh, God. The kingdom of where? Oh. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. 
and who, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Oh God. Eyes, the head, the body, and the body. The head has gone. His body is here. Jesus is Lord. Receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. And thou shalt be forgiven. And you say, I receive him. I brought you into the kingdom. Because I linked you to my head. No unbeliever can testify that Jesus is Lord. Only the born again can testify that Jesus is Lord. Now I've come to you to declare. Because I want you to make heaven. Jesus died for you, my brother. Accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. You know what is happening? He said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I have the keys. I'm about to open it for him. And that is why when you see me on crusade ground, I made some terrible statement. I said, run before I shut the heavens. Oh God. Run because I have the key of the kingdom of heaven. If I close it against you, you're finished. Run. And I tell them, Jesus died for you. Receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. I have opened the gates of heaven to them. And they gain entrance into the heavens. You know why? He is the head, I'm the body. Hallelujah. We are the body. You may be the leg. You may be the finger. You may be the eyes. You may be the nose. But you know what? We are the body of Christ. Not bodies. Body of Christ. He said, I give unto you power. He gave the body power to occupy. I wouldn't want to take you deeper than this about the mystery. You know, Paul made a statement. You know what Paul said? Let me just throw a little light into that word. Paul made a statement. He said, he said, When you are gathered together and my spirit with you commit such a one oh, commit such a one to wear you don't know the power the church wears. Say, commit him to death. But why are you committing him to death? Is what happened. He slept with his father's wife. Did you hear what I said? He slept with his father's wife. By that action, he will miss heaven. But now, send him to any grave that his spirit might be saved. Is, read what Paul said. Is it not there? Praise God. To deliver such an one unto Satan 
for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. It's a mystery. We can still expand that scripture. Stop doing this. It will send you to hell. Don't do it. Don't do it. He continues. He continues. He continues. And this person, by this, might make hell. I love you so much. I wouldn't want you to go to hell. Go home. And wait for us. You can't find this battle. They will drag you to hell. Go home. You have received warnings. You wouldn't purge. You have been told it's wrong. You wouldn't purge. And I love you so much. It's never done out of hatred. It's done out of bond of love. It's a mere transition. People sleep. They don't die. Go home and wait. You can't fight this battle now. Go home! That is, by the way, I want you to bow your head. Listen. Listen. God said to me, son, Son, you know you can reverse when you declare it. I want you to kill this in your life because of the realm. Kill it because of where I'm taking you to. Our problem is the heart. God is after our heart. You are blessed. You are blessed.